Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Lives of the Past. Walk with me today as I visit the final resting place of those who are buried here and who have passed before us. Explore with me the stories of their lives and their deaths. Hey guys, if you like this video or you liked other videos that I put up on my site, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It would help me immensely to get new viewers. Thank you very much. In this episode, I'll be visiting London Township Cemetery located in Monroe County, Michigan. So when I was doing my research for the cemetery, I was unable to find any historical information about the cemetery. One thing it does have here is a vault. Now these vaults were used during the winter months to store bodies until the springtime when the ground was thaw enough for them to be buried. By the looks of it in this picture I'm showing you right now, I don't think it's been used in a long time. Isaac Wilson was born on February 27, 1827 in New York State and died August 9, 1911 in Monroe County, Michigan. In 1856, Isaac Wilson moved to Michigan and in 1864 he enlisted in the 6th Michigan Heavy Artillery as a private. While in the service he was taken sick and was unable to do any manual labor afterwards. He was mustered out of the army on August 20th, 1865, along with everyone else from the regiment. Besides being a soldier, he was also a laborer, a painter, and a farmer. The next grave we're going to visit is the grave of three brothers, David Sprague, Anthony Benson, and Dustin Sprague. On November 15, 2002, all three perished in a house fire in Milan, Michigan. So this grave site was a little bit difficult for me to visit. Not only was it three young boys, but in 1977, my sister and her two young sons were also killed in a house fire. Hyman Billings enlisted in Company D, Ohio 72nd Infantry Regiment. On December 31, 1861, he was mustered out on November 28, 1864 in Columbus, Ohio. William C. Simmons was born on March 2, 1895 and passed away on June 22, 1944. So while researching Private Simmons, I couldn't find anything on him specifically. But according to his headstone, he served in the 115th Infantry, 29th Division of the U.S. Army. And his date of death, June 22, 1944, has some significance in history. June 6, 1944, the invasion of Normandy began. It is considered the largest amphibious invasion in history. Forces attacked German positions located on the northern coast of France. At the end of August 1944, the Allies had reached the Seine River. Paris was liberated and the Germans had been removed from northern France, which effectively concluded the Battle of Normandy. According to the Army's after-action reports available, the 115th Infantry was located in a region north of St. Lo, France, about 23 miles south of Omaha Beach. The 115th U.S. Infantry Regiment was conducting punch operations at night against the German defensive positions. Now, I couldn't find any information directly stating that Private Simmons was killed during the invasion of Normandy, but the time of his death along with the fact that the 115th Infantry was a crucial part of the invasions lead me to believe that he was indeed one of the casualties. Government records indicate there was about 72,911 deaths during the whole invasion. Tina Selick of Maybe, Michigan passed away on June 1st, 2016 in a motorcycle accident. 
She was operating a black 1993 Harley Davidson motorcycle northbound and was attempting to pass a pickup truck. While making her pass, the pickup driver signaled his intent to make a left-hand turn into a driveway. As he turned, Tina struck the driver's side of the vehicle. Tina, who was not wearing a helmet at the time of the crash, was taken to the hospital where she died later. Hollis Hap Hurst Jr. of Monroe, Michigan died March 14, 2009 from injuries he sustained when the motorcycle he was riding was struck by an automobile on Mall Road in Frenchtown Township, Michigan. Mr. Hurst was employed by Rayhorn Electric in Macomb Township and was also a master fabricator. An avid Harley-Davidson fan, he was especially fond of his motorcycle, Lucy. Hap enjoyed fishing with his sons and was a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 58 in Detroit. Bill Hazlett of Dundee, Michigan passed away on August 29, 2019 in Monroe, Michigan. While researching Bill's life, I ran across his memorial video from the funeral home, which struck a chord with me. So I, I can't play the video because I don't own it. I did take a few screenshots of photographs of him over the years. By looking at the grave site, it looks as if Bill was cremated and he was buried in the same grave site as his son, who passed away in 1989. Bill was well known for his generosity, even when poor health got the best of him. By being on a fixed income, Bill still found a way to freely give his resources to many different charities. Bill took care of his family, working as a custodian for the Ford Motor Company. Later on in life, he took employment at Killian's Liberty Sand as a heavy equipment operator, driving a front end loader for many years. Curtis Ringbloom, age 54, of London Township, Michigan, died on Wednesday, September 3rd, 2014. He passed away at his home with his family at his side. He valiantly fought colorectal cancer for the last four and a half years of his life, never giving up the fight. Clyde Bolster was 32 when he died on September 11, 1977, from injuries he suffered following a traffic accident when his car ran into the rear of a large bus which was slowing to pull off the road. Police state that the bus was carrying people who traveled with the country music show of Stella Parton, sister of well-known Dolly Parton, riding on the bus at the time of the crash with a driver and six passengers. Dolly's sister Stella was not listed as being on the bus. Mr. Boaster was born in Monroe, Michigan on January 22, 1945, and served in the U.S. Army from 1961 to 1965, including two years in Germany with the 509th Paratroopers. David Bolog, age 56, passed away on Monday, June 25, 2018, at St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ypsilanti, Michigan. He was born July 20, 1961, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. David loved to ride his Harley, and he loved to attend the Milan Road Angel events and state cookouts. Hungarian festivals were another of his favorite things to attend. He enjoyed Hungarian food so much that he was known to drive for hours to get it. David was warm and friendly, and would always do things for others before himself. Daniel Heinball, age 54, of Monroe, Michigan, passed away on February 21, 2013. Dan worked as a tool and crib manager at Ford Motor Company at the Michigan Assembly Plant in Wayne, Michigan, for over 29 years. He enjoyed working in his garden, woodworking, and especially restoring antique tractors.
Chad Edmonds was just 28 years old the night he died on July 12, 2009. The boat he was operating veered into an old steel pier on the Raisin River in Monroe County, Michigan. According to Monroe County Sheriff's reports, the boat's windshield was sheared off in the crash and Chad was ejected from the vessel. The boat had been moving east on the river when it turned and hit the pier. One of the three passengers still on the boat called from a cell phone for help shortly after 11 p.m. The Monroe Fire Department shortly before midnight located the damaged boat along the north bank of the river about a quarter mile west of the mouth of the river where it empties into Lake Erie. Deputies with the Monroe County Sheriff's Department found Chad's body about 1.45 a.m. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Jeremy Bird, 38 of Maybe, Michigan, died on May 11, 2015, while he was working in the basement of a construction site in Ypsilanti, Michigan, when the floor above him collapsed on top of him, pinning him underneath the flooring. A Ypsilanti Fire Department spokesperson said it took crews approximately 20 minutes to remove Mr. Bird from underneath the rubble and load him into the ambulance. Mr. Bird was pronounced dead upon arrival at St. Joseph Hospital. Mr. Bird was an avid collector of matching tennis shoes, thus the picture of the tennis shoes on his headstone. 